Scott, the history of the Mendez family goes back even before my time in rodeo. Give us a quick rundown. Well, you know, we were talking a little bit, uh, my grandfather and all of his brothers, uh, Frank Mendes is my grandfather, and there were six brothers in California, and um, they did a little bit of everything. I know they stayed on the uh, West Coast quite a bit, but I would always get uh, photographs and a little history where they would maybe come down to Dublin and get involved with uh, Gene Colbert and, uh, you know, load up on the train with all the other cowboys and, you know, head to Boston and New York. Uh, my grandfather was a, a real tough bull rider in 19, uh, you know, in the 40s, 44, 45, during World War II. And I just love to hear all the stories. Um, my dad rodeoed a little bit, Alan Mendes from Reno, Nevada, and of course my little brother rodeo. So I guess there's something uh, runs in the blood. How did you choose bull riding over the other events? Well, I know that's a good question. I'm a pretty big guy, 6'1 in high school, and, and uh, as I got out of high school, I was a little skinnier back then. But, uh, you know, bull riding to me, uh, I believe was something that I liked because of the individual side of it. Um, I roped and got on some bucking horses in high school and, you know, bareback and so forth, but uh, didn't really want to haul a horse around. Um, but to me, bull riding was, uh, if something was to go wrong, it was totally on my shoulders. You know, you can't blame the bull, or the, the gate man or anything like that. So to me, it was uh, a lot of proving myself to me. And I didn't know it at the time, Larry, but I had a lot of uh, low self-esteem and this came from a dysfunctional family and things like that. So growing up, uh, really, you can you know portray your image of who you are as an athlete in the arena. So that's why we have Western Harvest today. Tell us about Western Harvest. Well, um, that is our ministry. Uh, when I was rodeoing, I used to put this little saying on the side of my on my rigging bag. It just simply said, you know, spurring with Jesus. And and I, I kind of had a relationship with the Lord that was kind of in and out. Um, there was a, a, a defining moment in, in my testimony in my life in 1994 when Brent Thurman was uh, killed at the NFR. We were talking about that earlier. I realized I wasn't as, as, as invincible as I thought I was. So my relationship with the Lord got really serious and my walk, I met my wife, I've been married for 18 years, uh, three beautiful children who you've met. Um, but uh, Western Harvest was incorporated in 2003 as a, a 501c3 ministry. Uh, as an outreach ministry and uh, we've done some exciting things. We uh, are at right now building a headquarters in Weatherford. We've conducted a Christian bull riding league that really evolved out of our training camps. As you know, I go around the nation and, and I teach young men how to ride bulls, but it's deeper than that because uh, for me, when I was riding, I needed a, a mentor. Sometimes rodeo becomes a father to us. But um, I realize today that a lot of these young men that want to go and wear the buckles that you and I have, and uh, you know, they're just searching on the inside. And so as a ministry, you can give them a foundation of character, um, who they are in that relationship, and then give them the skills they need in the arena too. So we get a chance to do a number of things. What do you think about our government and what they've done with religion uh, in schools and, and, and so many other areas of our society? Well, that's, that's a real open-end question for sure, but you know, um, we're blessed. We homeschool our children. Uh, it may not be for everybody. In our situation with me rodeoing and being involved in ministry and, and doing a lot of work on the road, my family can be with me. That's pr predominantly one thing. Uh, but what they've done is, uh, you know, just really taken a lot of the founding fathers of what some of the doctrine, the beliefs that they, you know, who, who we are as a country. And when they took that out, uh, it just exposed us to a lot of anything, a lot of mediocrity and a lot of uh, wavering in your beliefs. And I believe that when God is taken out of uh, school and, and our politics and governments and we're forced to make decisions that is what built this country, things can get challenging. I think sometimes we uh, are just uh, you know, reaping what we've sown. So we've got to get back to it. And that's why I love working with Donna Lynn. So how do you think we can get back to it? Well, that's a good question, Larry. I think most importantly, we've got to work together. You know, a minute ago we were talking about Western Wishes and Western Harvest, kind of just being out in the same playing field but not working together. And I love Donna Lynn's heart and her, her gifts and her skills to, and talents to be able to bring Chris Cox together, yourself, um, others, Pat Day, uh, a lot of, of good men. And when good men come together and stand up for what's right, it's going to be a trickle effect. 
and other people can begin to uh, role model or pattern after that. Is Western Harvest Ministries directed more towards people who have a chance to enjoy the Western culture and lifestyle, or is it for anybody who, who wants to find out more about the, the real deal? Well, you know, there's days when we're taking young men into the bunkhouse, such as the setting here today, and sometimes we look like a, maybe a Cal Farley's Boys Ranch, where we're really trying to help young men, and then there's other days when we're doing clinics. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's if you're going to reach the youth, you've got to restore the family. So mom and dad are always in the wings. If, if they're around, a lot of the young men that we work with don't seem to have a, a, a father figure, much less godly principles in their life. So we hope that uh, if you enjoy the Western lifestyle, uh, you'll come out to an event. And we, we always want to build the family up through what we do. The sport, as you know, with endless hours on the road and exposure to a lot of temptations is devastating on young men that don't know who they are. So we believe in the family being whole and then that the children will uh, naturally be whole as well. So your goal as a young bull rider was to, I'm sure, to win a world championship. And after Brent's untimely death, how many years before you won that first or that championship? Well, that happened in 1994, and up until that point, you know, I'd been to the finals a few times. That was my third year in '94, and you know, I just knew when I saw the draw that day in the tenth round that I had a little bull that I was certainly going to ride and I was going to win the world. I mean, there was no doubt. Uh, seeing that tragic moment and putting myself in my friend's shoes to realize that he'd never have breath again in his body to accomplish it. That day walking out as a runner-up was the day that I believe I became a world champion, but I had to wait the next three years. And the next three years, as we talked about earlier, was when I started seeing myself as a champion and not focusing on just my goals, but trying to work with the kids and do things that I was waiting to accomplish something in order to do that. And it was just just the opposite. Um, so God really developed me as an athlete, as a, as a world champion those three years. And, and those three years are way more important than 97. 97 was just kind of an outward crowning of what was going on on the inside all along. How can people find out more about Western Harvest Ministries? Uh, we too have a website, just westernharvestministries.com. Um, a lot of information there. We're working on some motion pictures and things. We just believe that if we're going to reach the kids, we've got to use every tool, every resource, every ranch, every uh, good person working together. And that's what we're going to try to work with Donna Lynn on is pulling people together with that same goal of, of making a difference in this world and uh, especially for the kids. When I grew up and would go to the movies, it was Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, uh, good versus bad. Uh, things have changed in that industry. What effect do you think that has on young people in this day and age compared to people that grew up during that era back then? Man, a whole lot. I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, you know, again, going back to roots, my grandfather was, was a, a great bull rider. But on my mother's side of the family, uh, my great-great-grandfather was William S. Hart, a silent screen movie star actor. And you're right, there was a lot of good and evil. Today, I think because of multimedia, it's always constantly in front of children's face through television, through internet, iPhones, everywhere we go, we're surrounded with, with the thoughts being made for us, you know. Uh, malls, music, and so if you're going to grow in your relationship with Lord, you have to have hearing ears and a humble heart. And so today for these kids entertaining themselves with violence and things that are acceptable, sex outside of marriage and violence and drug use, then it becomes a role modeling of that. And it, it, it's almost acceptable to them. And then they're forced to have to be in those roles. And what we want to do is go back to those old westerns where good will prevail by doing what's right at any cost. Scott Mendes, you're a champ. Thank you, Larry.